Coming up next, breaking news we're continuing to monitor in Ramona, where a SWAT standoff is underway. Plus, a woman is caught on camera keying and damaging a car. Tonight, how you can help the victim. And where generosity took center stage on this Giving Tuesday. Eat like a Brazilian cowboy with 16 different types of meat. Galpone Gaucho opens their doors in San Diego. Coming up in the Zevoli Zone. This is CBS 8 News Live at 6. We begin with breaking news. Right now, San Diego police are in a standoff with a man holed up inside a building in Ramona. Good evening, I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. This all started around 1130 this morning when officers got a call about two men in a fight in City Heights. CBS 8's Jesse Pagan has been tracking the situation. Jesse, what's happening right now? Hey guys, right now we know the man is inside one of two long warehouse like buildings. You see them right there and you see the entire setup of the scene from Chopper 8. Officers don't know exactly what they are or why the man chose those two buildings, but we knew know San Diego police is heading the scene with the help of the San Diego County Sheriff's Department and the SWAT team. And as you can imagine, the area is closed off and traffic is moving all around it. So let's go to some more video from Chopper 8 from above. You can see all the officers, negotiators, SWAT team vehicles and more all there. You can see that traffic on the left hand side right there as well. The San Diego County Sheriff's Department is also out there since it is their jurisdiction, but this is a San Diego police case since it started in the city. This all happened around 1130 when officers got to Monroe Avenue in City Heights. They got a call about two men in a fight and the caller said one had a gun. Detectives say when officers got there, the man with the gun sped off on a motorcycle, leading officers on that chase. Officers pulled back, but an SDPD chopper stayed overhead and tracked the man to the spot in Ramona. They say they confronted the man, but he didn't cooperate and barricaded himself inside, which kicked off the standoff. That is really the goal here is to all these resources that you see, all the time that we're taking, the interruption of the flow of traffic in the neighborhood is to get the suspect to surrender peacefully so we can resolve this without any further incident or injury. Our crew in Ramona has heard flashbangs as the SWAT team and officers try to get the man to come out of the building. You can see the mobile headquarters set up right there in the middle of the street. As you can imagine, big scene there on Vista Ramona Road. Officers are directing traffic around and away from the area. So expect backups and to move slowly around there, even up the old Julian Highway, which is just around the corner. Carlo Marcella. Thanks, Jesse. We'll keep on that. We're learning tonight that the Aztecs have found their next head football coach. The school has not made it official just yet, but multiple sources close to the program have confirmed it. Jake Gariani is here early tonight with what we know so far. Jake? This is exciting news. We've been waiting a long time to figure out who the Aztecs would have step in here to be their next head coach. And now we know uh, this hire coming with some of that prime time swagger and excitement that SDSU so desperately needs. As you mentioned, multiple reports are stating that San Diego State is set to hire Colorado Buffalo's offensive coordinator, Sean Lewis. Lewis is expected to be introduced as the next head coach tomorrow morning. Before his time in Boulder, the 37 year old Lewis spent five seasons as Kent State's head coach, taking them to multiple bowl games and earning the Golden Flashes their first bowl victory in school history. After joining Deion Sanders in Colorado, Lewis and their offense came out of the gates on fire. They were the talk of all of college football at the start of the season. Uh, the Buffs scored more than 40 points in four of their first seven games, but Lewis was demoted from play calling duties early in November in favor of former NFL coach Pat Shermer as Colorado's season went into a complete tailspin. Lewis is known for his fast paced offense that spreads out the field. In fact, in 2020 with the Golden Flashes, Lewis's offense finished number one nationally in yards per a game and points per a game, scoring almost 50 on average. And as I mentioned, this is the type of excitement in scoring that SDSU just had to have in this hire. San Diego State hasn't finished in the top 75 nationally in scoring offense since 2017. Lewis will replace the now retired Brady Hoke. Both Colorado and San Diego State finished the year four and eight. Exciting times for the Aztecs and uh, looking forward to watching this new offense out on the field, Marcelo and Carlo. Thanks, Jake. An act of vandalism caught on camera, and tonight the victim's son is reaching out to us for help. He says the woman you just saw in the video keyed his mom's car. CBS 8's Brian White has the details. She like goes inside her trunk and she like gets her key out and you can see she comes around and then that's when she keys the car. 
The victim's son, who doesn't want to be identified by name, says he and his mom were at a doctor's appointment at this Kaiser up Vandiver Avenue in Mission Valley a couple weeks ago. When they came back to the parking garage, we see the scratch all on the whole side of the car. Deep scratches on his mom's 2019 Tesla Model 3, but he was in luck. I immediately got into the car and I checked the dash cam and that's where I went over the, all the video. The driver's side camera caught the whole thing and he couldn't believe it. We got her the first time that she came through and keyed the car and then she comes around again and she's kind of pretending that her car has something on it even though there's clearly nothing on the video. Then she comes around again and she keys the car for the second time and i was like oh my god it was like gut-wrenching then the woman gets into a white honda and backs out there's her like looking over the car she's backing out like super slowly and she's really eyeing the damage there was no front license plate on the suspect's car but fortunately he had his own car parked behind both of them and got the back license plate on camera cbs8 ran the plate it came back to a woman who lives in san diego i gave her a call and she answered do you have any knowledge of this happening we're choosing not to identify her at this time. She said she owns a white Honda, but that she doesn't know anything about the Tesla being keyed. The victim filed a police report hours after it happened, and SDPD told CBS 8 a detective has been assigned to the case. I mean, thing is, like, why did you do this? I asked him if he had maybe dinged her door when they got out of the car. She got there after us. How would we ding her door? Uh, she got there and left before we got to the car. It'll be more than $3,000 to fix, and to add salt to injury, the car had actually been paint corrected and ceramic coated a few months earlier. I don't know why someone would ever do this to somebody else's car. Like, and I've got you on video, so. I'm Brian White for CBS 8. All right. Don't get too excited, but you may need your umbrella this week. We do need the rain. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis is here early to tell us about some showers in your forecast. Carlene? And that's the thing. It's showers. It's nothing too heavy, so it's like beneficial rain. Mm -hmm. But slow down on the roads. There you go. We always talk about that. You have spin outs whenever we start to see more of that rain because it makes the roads slick. So that oil coming up. We're talking about enough rainfall to just basically get the roads a little damp out there. As mentioned, give yourself some extra time. It's not going to be a total washout over three days. When we set the clock in motion, we are pretty clear right now. A few high clouds that are offshore, but you're looking at more cloud cover rolling in by tomorrow morning. A few isolated showers. You've seen that favorite uh, North County around 10:05 and then seeing right along coastal mountain slopes and you're seeing that near Ramona about 1230. So nothing too crazy. And then we start to have the batches of moisture, some heavier pockets moving in by tomorrow evening. And that's around 1025. That will keep going into the overnight hours, just on again, off again activity. And even seeing some of that moisture lingering all the way through about Thursday morning at 1120 in the morning for the South Bay, seeing it for downtown, even near Santee. So this is not going to be a total washout when it does come to the rainfall, but we are looking at some slick roads out there and even scaling back when it does come to our chances on Friday. So we'll go ahead and take a look at your complete forecast coming up. Carlo. Thanks, Carlene. New numbers are out on the city of San Diego's efforts to clean out homeless encampments. It's been four months since police started to crack down on encampments on public property. CBS 8's David Goffton takes a closer look at what's happening downtown. I've been out here on the streets two years and I've been here in San Diego like six years. Tara Chaffee is living in a tent downtown near the 163 freeway. Do they come by here and try to clear you out? Yeah, they do. They come by and, and do a cleanup. So we have to clear all of our stuff out so they can do the cleanup. And then a while after that, we can come back. Under the city's unsafe camping ordinance, police can issue citations to people living on public property. The new law went into effect on August 1st. Since then, officers have made two arrests, issued nine citations, and given warnings to 177 people living on the streets. The city says they only arrest people as a last resort. Instead, they try to get people to move off the streets and into a shelter like these two tent cities near Balboa Park, also called safe sleeping areas. Tim Lucy lives right next door to one of them. If I had no place to go and that was offered to me, I, uh, if it was safe, I think that's a great deal for a night. I, I don't think it's a permanent solution. This man named Mike tells me he's a veteran living on the streets downtown. What's it going to take for you to get shelter? I own a home. 
He says the city does come by offering him help, but he's not moving. So you don't want to move into a city shelter? I don't. For free? I, no. No, I don't want nothing free in life except air. Tara told me she had recently lived in one of those safe sleeping areas, and she had nothing but praise for the city. They're actually a wonderful, you know, they have the power, people can shower, um, they help people get their IDs, uh, get jobs. So, no, it's a really good thing they're doing. I think it's a really good thing. Unfortunately, it didn't last long, she says, due to a domestic violence incident in the city shelter. Um, I got kicked out, and I'm fighting to get back in, and I've had problem after problem. So I just, you know, got to prove myself that, you know, that won't happen again, I guess is the best way to say it. The city says they try to avoid arresting people. The goal is to encourage people to get off the street and seek shelter. In downtown San Diego, David Godfordson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. California will use nearly $300 million to address homeless encampments near state roads. Governor Gavin Newsom made that announcement today, saying it could get at least 10,000 people off the streets. The money will be distributed as grants to local cities and counties. A Caltrans spokesperson said that any piece of land being used for transportation purposes will qualify for this new effort. That includes bike paths, park and rides, and highways. Still ahead tonight, an emotional tribute to former First Lady Rosalind Carter. Plus, some local students fill out their holiday wish lists and hope they are on Santa's good list. But first, a fight over a rodeo at Petco Park is now in the hands of a judge.